Long ago, bands, orchestras, and choirs played together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the virus attacked. Only containment or eradication could stop it, but when the world needed it most, it exploded into a global pandemic, ending live music. A year passed, and musicians discovered a new way to make music together, the Reddit Symphony Orchestra. And although virtual orchestras are great, they still have a long way to go before they can match the experience of in-person orchestras. But I believe virtual orchestras can save the music world. I've been playing with the Reddit Symphony Orchestra since October and recently joined the Discord Symphony and the Virtual Video Game Orchestra, all groups of highly skilled musicians who continue to make music by collaborating using social media and recording software. Today we're going behind the scenes to see the process of practicing, recording, editing, and submitting for a virtual orchestra project. There's almost always at least one active project in each of these groups. The Reddit Symphony is huge and typically has anywhere from 5 to 10 active projects at a time. Each approved project includes a set of materials on either Google Drive or Dropbox, including sheet music, a click track, and a place to submit final recordings. A click track is basically a complete recording of the piece, plus a metronome on top, since members are playing by themselves without the help of other musicians or a conductor. The host of the project also gives background on the piece and a deadline for submitting recordings. It is imperative that musicians play in sync with the click track so the person mixing the recordings together can align them as precisely as possible. Some click tracks include a voiceover to help musicians keep track of where they are in the music, calling out rehearsal markings and counting over any tempo changes. One thing I love about virtual orchestra is the ability to play multiple parts. Normally, in a traditional band or orchestra, you get 3 to 10 pieces of music, one part each. So for example, I might play first trombone on three pieces, second trombone on two, and third trombone on one. In virtual orchestra, you can record as many parts as you like. I usually record all the trombone parts. It's a lot more work learning multiple parts instead of just one, but usually I only work on one or two pieces at a time. You can also play multiple instruments. I recently started submitting flute and French horn recordings too, boosting my confidence on both instruments. Sometimes if I really want to challenge myself, I'll play the euphonium parts on trombone, many of which include more notes, larger intervals, and ornamentation such as grace notes and trills. Recording parts instead of playing them live also gives you the opportunity to edit. You want to submit basically a perfect track so you can record multiple times and fix any notes you mess up. I'll go more into my editing process in a minute. When you're ready to record, you simply listen to the click track using headphones and play along. You don't want the microphone to pick up all the clicking. I usually listen to the click track on my phone and record on the computer, although I have done both simultaneously through the computer before. This allows me to sit further away from the microphone so it doesn't pick up breathing and key clicking or overwhelm the microphone with loud playing and distort the sound. Most virtual orchestras just require audio files. I use Audacity, a free open source, super user friendly software. For those that also want video, I use Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS, to capture the video while recording the audio on Audacity at the same time. But that's all fancy. Some people just use their phones. Now it's time to edit. This is by far the largest part of the virtual orchestra recording process. I want my recordings to be as close to perfect as possible, so I spend a lot of time editing them once I've gotten all my footage. First, I play back the recording, listening for any mistakes. If it's just a couple wrong notes, I'll look for the same note elsewhere in the piece and just copy and paste it into another track, essentially replacing the mistake. If I'm super unhappy with the recording, I'll do another take, but I never delete anything because there's usually something usable. If I do another take, I add another track below the first track and align them. I zoom in so I can ensure they are aligned perfectly, then play them back several times together just to confirm everything sounds good. I mute tracks so I can hear one at a time, marking the best parts of each. I silence the audio of the one I don't want, resulting in one hopefully perfect track. I also apply noise reduction to eliminate unwanted sounds such as computer whirring or noisy breathing. Sometimes I'll also use other effects such as amplify, fade in, fade out, or reverb. Amplify just makes the sound louder, which I'll just use if I replaced a note somewhere and now it's the wrong dynamic. Fade in and fade out allow for smoother transitions and allow me to fake note lengths if needed. For example, I copy-pasted a half note in one of my previous recordings, but needed it to be a dot a quarter note, so I used fade out to make it shorter without sounding choppy. Reverb essentially makes the music sound like it was recorded at a concert hall instead of in my basement. I don't do this on virtual orchestra recordings, but I do use it religiously in my YouTube videos. When you're finally finished, it's time to submit. Export the file as mp3 or WAV. I usually do mp3s because they're smaller, but WAVs sound better, and some groups prefer them. 
I then rename the file using the preferred naming conventions, usually name, instrument, and part. All the groups I'm in allow you to use fake names or usernames if you prefer. Then you upload the file to Dropbox or Google Drive, or wherever the host wants you to submit them. And then you're done! I've been super impressed by the quality of the final products. Most of them, you can't even tell that the musicians weren't in the same room. Check out my virtual orchestra's playlist to hear what I'm talking about. I've never hosted a project or mixed together all the recordings for the final product, but if you're interested in seeing that side of things, I'd be happy to bring someone on the channel to talk about it. Please show your support for my channel by liking this video and subscribing. Your support means the world to me. And tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you know virtual orchestras existed? What music topic would you like to see me cover next? Stay tuned!